the end post that one of the gates is going to come up to. So this is our main six, six to seven inch diameter post. And then this is the brace post. So we're going to have a piece of fence stretching between these two braces. Going from that corner post all the way over to this post that the gate is going to rest against. This is Red Brand sheep and goat fencing. They call it, it's woven wire. None of these joints are actually welded together. They're just, it's twisted together with a little, little knot made out of uh, wire. So it can actually give and, and stretch. So that, that just makes it much stronger and flexible. If uh, animals lean up against it, it can give and then spring right back rather than stretching like welded wire fence would do. Um, so, this is our shortest section, so this is all of our leftover wire from doing, you know, the whole previous runs from here all the way out to the road. Um, so we might have to splice together two sections to make it go the full length from one post to the other, or we might not, but this should be enough to get there. The first thing we're going to stretch a uh, string between the two posts um, to give us a straight line for setting the T-posts. Next part is going to be putting T-posts in the ground. These are going to go every 10 feet. So we put it right up against the string line facing this way. The fence is going to be on this side of it so that when the animals in this pasture push up against the fence, it's leaning against this post. So you want the post to be on the outside and the wire fence to be on the inside. And, uh, we just measured every 10 feet or so along this tape, measuring tape. And uh, two posts is all we needed. This is about 28 feet between these, between the two brace posts. So now it's time to unroll the fence. Do you want me to step on the end of it? Is it getting stuck? Um, we bought enough length of fencing to cover the full perimeter of the field that we wanted fenced in to include a pasture for sheep and goats. But that doesn't mean that it's all going to work in whole rolls. So we came to this last section here and this needs to come all the way around far enough for us to wrap around the end of this post and tie it to itself before, when we stretch it. So obviously it's not long enough. We're about um, 10 feet short of what we need because we need an extra kind of an extra two feet or so at the end to wrap around that post to tie it off but then an extra two feet overlapping past this end um, so that it will have enough material to be stretched fully tied around both corner posts um, so we have plenty here it looks like to splice to this one. So what we'll end up doing is probably about right here where, where you see a lot of them got damaged and bent and kind of messed up. That would just be a pain to have to try and straighten those all out. So I'll probably cut it off around right here and, um, and then that's where we'll splice this fence roll into this one and we'll show you how that works in a minute. This is the splice joint. You can see two of the vertical wires just side by side and the overlapping um, lengths of wire just wrapped around the opposite sides. 
and um, I'm just trimming off the excess and and we have a spliced fence so we have just enough now to reach all the way down to the other pole it's just barely enough it looks very neat so we just put a couple of staples on the top and bottom wires just to hold it in place not to hold the fence tight because we don't want staples being the only thing holding all of the tension against those wires we want the wires wrapped around the pole and wrapped around itself so that it's actually pulling on the pole not just pulling through the edge of the staple so this holds it in place so it'll be straight and lined up and now we have a lot of cutting and twisting and tying to do Halfway done. Each wire is wrapped around itself, going around the pole, so it'll be pulling on the pole, and uh, it won't be able to pull out through the staples if we had only stapled it. Do you want to look at? And see, the hard part is trying to make the wraps look really tight and nice and neat. Um, but I had a little twister tool thing that helps a little bit. And now the next step is to put the stretcher bar on and stretch the fence tight. And then do the same thing on the other pole. I like this part, it's my favorite. Okay, so... This is a woven wire fence stretcher, as you can read right here. But this is a store-bought one. You can make them yourself out of a couple of 2x4s and some bolts, but we bought this one because it was quicker that way. So, so we have the um, woven wire fence stretcher. It just hooks up with bolts that go through uh, the squares of wiring, and this metal bar clamps the wires up against this 2x4 once all the bolts are tightened up and uh, we've bent the wires around so that they won't slip through it as we stretch it. And then we're going to hook up two come-alongs, one here and one down here, and basically stretch it to this post and um, we'll be able to tighten it with the come-alongs until it's nice and tight and we'll, from that point we'll just clip one wire at a time and start wrapping them around the final post. And uh, once all the wires are wrapped, it'll be done. So we're gonna use this as a little trick. As we tighten these up, <laughs> the airplane's not going to bite us, sweetie. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this... Uh, okay. This is just so that the 2x4 doesn't dig into the ground and start getting uh, hung up, but because it comes down further than the lowest wire on the fence, and when you tighten it up, it tends to dig down into the ground, so the board will just help it to slide along there. We learned that the hard way on other sections of the fence, so a little trick that we came up with. Looks nice and tight. Now we're going to put on the, the ties for the um, poles there. You can barely see where you spliced it. You did such a good job. Paul used to be an airplane mechanic, so everything had to be very precise. 
though our fence is working really well, it's keeping out the little vagabonds. Yeah. Hi, the the guys a bunch of Get out of here. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't get up here. <laughs> on here now Mommy, and it I just has it'll to keep it from bowing out in the middle and to keep it all uh, Mommy, supported by the fence these just clip around let's see I'll do it this way like that and we just go down the full length at every t-post maybe it's about three or so in each post one in the top and bottom and middle we'll go back and twist them around a lot more than that that's just to initially hold it in place the last step is going to be to attach the fence to this post the way to do that with keeping all of right now the only reason the fence is tight is because it's being pulled from this point on with the come alongs so the way we keep it tensioned and tie it to this at the same time is just cut all these vertical wires down each of these and pull off the little extra pieces. And then one at a time, we clip the middle wires first and uh, start with, usually I just start in the middle and start um, with one wire, clip it loose and wrap it around this pole and tie it to itself. slide off the excess the extra bit interested yep so that's the extra To help wrapping these wires around a bunch of times to make it look neat, a little tool like this helps a lot so you're not using so much force with your fingertips. Just slip it through and wrap it around like so. And we got that at Tractor Supply. Mm -hmm. And this one is especially difficult since there's a... Yeah, this brace is in the way so it kind of blocks access from making it quite as neat as you might otherwise be able to, but you can always kind of squeeze those wraps together as it as you're going and keep it keep it close and neat. <laughs> Finished product. Only four. one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only twelve more to go. <laughs>